The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. A world of injustice. In today's headlines, a cry for justice, a long wait for justice. Family gets justice. Justice arrives for all. A justice served. Finally, justice. He is saying now the days of your struggling are over. He is saying now anything from now on that's making you uncomfortable, I'm going to remove it. You don't have to depend on the police. You don't have to depend on Paul Paul no more. You can go to the court of heaven. God is a judge. And people are not your problem. They're just puppets being used by the puppet master. And what you and me going to do is we going to take the puppet master before God. When you go after him, you will spoil his house. This is a prophetic time that God now is going to execute vengeance on behalf of his people. Now, the first thing people do is question this because they say that's not for today. And the reason why they say that's not for today is because they read Luke chapter 4 and starting at verse 18 and 19 and see where Jesus read from this same text. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, uh, good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, covering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach acceptably of the Lord. And he closed the book and set out. He didn't say anything about vengeance. He didn't say anything about comfort. He didn't say anything about that. Now, the reason why is because that was not a part of his ministry. This part of his ministry, that ministry started with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, that started the latter rain. And that started all those portions that you read there, that he's going to comfort, that it's going to be all of joy, and so forth and so on. So now what I said to you is that the church is prophetically packaged to lead the world. And understanding vengeance and recompense creates a significant change in your attitude and your behavior. When you know that the job of the Holy Spirit in these last days is to execute vengeance upon all the enemies of God's people, which includes he's working on your behalf and that nothing shall escape him, it gives you a new level of boldness about what God may call you to do. Come on, say with me now. In these last days. Now, justice is one of the main channels through which heaven's economy shall manifest. So whatever is now tampering with your destiny in God, whatever's after your peace, your progress, your career, your business, your children, God is going to command vengeance. Now, it's not out of hatred or anything like that. So let's go back to if, uh, Exodus chapter 1, please. Now, this is where Joseph had been raised up, and he was the prime minister of Egypt. Then his people, the Jews, came on down and they were got, gotten some of the best land that was there. But now Joseph died, verse 6, and all his brethren and all that generation and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was full of them. They took over positions in Egypt. 
Now there arose a new king of Egypt, which didn't know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more than a mighty than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth, uh, there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So what did they do now? They started a, a strategy to strip the Jews of either titles or money or whatever, because the next thing you see in verse 11, therefore they did set over them taskmasters and afflict them of their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasured cities and paid them of, uh, of Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And verse 14, and they made their lives what? Bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So now they took them and made slaves out of them. Now, they are crying to God. But God said they're going to be in there 400 years. And then after 400 years, they're going to be released. But when they come out, they're not going to come out empty. In other words, whatever's been owed them is going to be repaid to them. One of the words for re, re, uh, recompense is compensation. Chapter 2 and verse 24. And God heard their groanings, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. All right? Here's what he said to Moses. I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I do in the midst thereof. And after that, he's going to let you go. And I will give this people, what? Favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you will not go empty. So I said that redemption is not complete without divine provision. Stay with me. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and every and, and her, of her that sojourneth in the house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and you shall put them on your sons, upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. What does spoil mean, somebody? I'm still reading now. This is for you. Look what it says in verse 22. And thou shall say to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. And I say unto you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your son. The word is, there is slay. It means to destroy, to kill, even that firstborn. Now, God is a God of justice. He's a God of love. He's not a God of a killer. But here is Israel. We're on a prophetic timetable. Let them go, Pharaoh, because they have a destiny that must be fulfilled. And if you refuse to let them go, eventually somebody is going to be terminated. Um, listen, stay with me. You say, well, wait a minute. Jesus didn't do that. Let me show you. Turn all the way back to Acts chapter 13. Here is Paul on starting his ministry. And verse 4, And they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed to Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And they, when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in their synagogues of the Jews, 
and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was who? Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy, deputy means governor, of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, prudent means intelligent and got some sense, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Now notice this man desired to hear the word and he's a governor of the whole land. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them. He's standing in the way, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. But Saul, who was what? Called Paul, filled with the who? Holy Ghost. Set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, you child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and the darkness, and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. And then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed and was, was being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, you never saw Jesus do that. Even when they wanted to call fire down on the whole village, Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. Jesus' ministry wasn't like that. But once the church got born in the earth, the rest of this Isaiah 61 kicked in. And it kicked in because you got a job to do, and the enemy is trying to block you from doing the job that you're going to do. So God is coming in with something called vengeance. And he's coming in not because he hates somebody. He's coming in because he loves justice. And everywhere you go, everything going to have to come back in line with the way it is in heaven. And I'm telling you, it's been out of line. So the number one job of the Holy Spirit in the last days is to execute upon uh, any, any of the enemies of God's people is to execute judgment. And nothing shall escape that, that, that the Holy Spirit. Now I'm telling you right now that that's what's been missing in our land. Because when justice is not there, people not only lose hope, but they lose faith. And then they open themselves up to all kinds of evil coming into a land. And I'm telling you right now that justice has not been there. And that is one of the main things that, I'm going to just use a modern day example, Martin Luther King. And that's one of the main things that he preached in his sermons is he preached about justice. He preached from uh, Amos chapter 5 and verse 24. He said, but let judgment or justice run down like waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Now, what was he doing? He was saying, wait a minute. He said, there's been injustice in this thing. And folks, I know what that's about because I was brought up in Alabama. When I was brought up, you could not swim in the swimming pool that the whites swim in in my town. You could not go to their, their school. I could not show up in their church because if I did show up in their church, I'd probably be arrested. I'm here to tell you, wait a minute, how can the church be so void of justice because the church, now understand, we ain't mad at people because that's what Martin Luther King said. He said, now wait a minute, we're going to do this, but we're going to get a policy called nonviolence. You see, because if you sow seeds to the flesh, you're going to have to reap seeds of the flesh. So you don't have anything to do with it. It's the Lord that's going to get even. It's the Lord that's going to get your stuff back. It's the Lord that's going to get all the recompense that you deserve and bring it back into your hands. Now, this is not just for black folk. This is for every Christian and every believer that's in the family of the living God. I'm saying the devil has stolen 
stolen from everybody. He's some way he has worked you and stolen things from you. And God is saying, now I'm going to return it to you. He is saying, now the days of your struggling are over. He is saying, now you're not going to have to that struggle for anything else. I'm, as a matter of fact, anything from now on that's making you uncomfortable, I'm going to remove it. It doesn't make any, I'm talking about this is forever. Say amen to that. We are the redeemed. Say amen to that. Now I'm saying that some of you got more recompense coming than other folk, but you do have some coming. And I don't know about you, but I got a bunch coming. When I was young, you don't go to court because there's no justice in there. When you go to court, when I was young, where I was, you look at the jury and nobody looked like you. You better brace yourself because whether you did it or not, you guilty. My point to you is, is look at what's happening. Many of the people in this country even, they don't feel that there's any justice in the system. Why do you think rappers are making records about cop killing? Because they, they don't feel nobody's defending them. Um, uh, you better hear what I'm telling you now. They, this gangster rap and all of this, they want to take it over themselves. They want to they wanna be their own judgment. You ain't listening to me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. I'm saying right now that the deal is now you don't have to depend on the police. You don't have to depend on Paul Paul no more. You can go to the court of heaven. God is the judge. Say amen to that. And people are not your problem. They're just puppets being used by the puppet master. And what you and me going to do is we're going to take the puppet master before God. Say amen to that. And the puppet master is the one that's holding your stuff. Because if you go after people, the puppet master will just take it from him and give it to her. He just switch it all around. But he can't switch it when you go after him. When you go after him, you will spoil his house. He's got to give up every contract that's supposed to come to you, every invention that was yours, every orphanage you were supposed to build, every school, every business, every invention, he's got to give it up. Stuff is about to come to you that you're going to say, my God, my God, my God. Say amen to that. It's time for restoration. We ain't mad at people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. These brothers and sisters, every one of them are our brothers and sisters. You can't get mad at people. People are not your problem. It's the devil that's a thief. He comes to steal, come on, to kill and to destroy. Doesn't make any difference. That court system, I'm looking at what they're doing now. All of a sudden they tell me they have just taken in God we trust off the hundred dollar bill. Then I hear that now they are trying to say that the day, national day of prayer is not legal. <laughs> Folks, that is injustice. And we not going to sit here and just praise the Lord. No, it's time for vengeance and recompense. Say amen to that. And look at all the poor that need to be fed. I'm talking about the injustice in the nations. It, it's systemic poverty that's got them. Systemic poverty means that you can get food, but the distribution won't let it get to them. That's what they were having in Haiti. They were shipping plenty of food down there, but somebody was holding it. And somebody was causing it not to get to the people. Well, what happens with poverty? Poverty is just not, not eating, folks. Poverty is just not, not having money. 
poverty, if you don't eat enough, eat right foods and so forth, it begins to affect your whole system. Children who are malnourished and starving will not even go out and play. They will sit there and look at you with hungry eyes. They can't even have any joy. I'm saying many of the mothers who are in poverty can't even breastfeed their children. And you should see 25,000 people are dying in a day off of poverty. They don't have enough to eat. Now at the same time, we are paying farmers not to grow? Something's wrong with that system. Well, one thing we need is we need some new leaders there. We need some people that are not trying to, come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Say amen to this. That's seeing justice. And God is a God of justice. He's saying I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with people dying because they can't eat and plenty of food is in this earth. I'm fed up with people who are trying to take advantage of other people and to make more and more money just to sit on top of it. Vengeance is coming now. He is saying, you either gonna let it go or you gonna be terminated. Now give the Lord a hand, that's where we going. I said, that's where we going. They said, Daniel, that all of a sudden they made a law that you can't pray. Made a law that you can't pray to any other God except the God of Nebuchadnezzar or or Darius or whoever it was. What did Daniel do? He went right out up in that room, got before God and began to pray. He opened his window. He didn't care whether they saw him or not. You know why? Because they were violating the laws of his God. I'm telling you, his justice got to come back in the land. I said it's got to come first in the church. And then the church has got to come spread to the nations of the earth. Say amen to that. Nobody can tell you you can't pray. Where did that come from? I'm saying that things, laws that have been on the books are about to be reversed because we got some people that because you understand vengeance and every place you lay the soles of your foot, you know the Holy Ghost is right there shielding you. You're going to be bold as a six shooter. You're going to say things that need to be said. I don't care if it's a congressman. I don't care if it's a businessman, whoever it is. You're going to say what needs to be said because you are going to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I trust that you are blessed by today's teaching. Now, this series is entitled Your Day of Justice. It's volume one. Now, this teaching I did several years ago, but this message is very, very relevant for what we're going through and things that we're seeing and facing today. Now, we're faced with injustices of the world. Now, it's important to know that the church is designed to lead the way in getting things right, meaning that uh, bringing justice in situations and understanding God's vengeance and God's recompense. And what we do is once you understand that and once we have taught that to you, you'll be surprised how this vengeance and recompense creates a significant change in your attitude and behavior. Let me give you an example. For example, Moses went down to Egypt and God uh, protected Moses all while he was down there facing Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh was one of the most powerful people in the world at that time. And Moses went down there and, and told him face to face, let my people go. Now, Pharaoh, you know, understand that nobody could talk to him like that. He'd just order your head to be cut off. But he couldn't do that with Moses. Why? Because when you're divinely positioned, you're divinely protected. And so what happened is Moses was protected by the vengeance of God. In other words, uh, the Holy Spirit in these last days is going to execute vengeance upon all the enemies of God's people that, 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 and nothing shall escape him. In other words, when we say what Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against you prospers, 
and every tongue that rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. <laughs> and this is for you today. This says also in Isaiah that when the enemy comes against you one way, he'll flee before you seven ways. Uh, I think that said that in Deuteronomy 28. Now all this is happening to you because the enemy tries to mount up things against you when you're going forward and trying to, and trying to stay in efforts to establish the kingdom of God in this earth. So as you bring this kingdom to different places that might be hostile, I want you to know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. There is even a soldier's prayer in the Bible that they can pray. It says, go armed before the Lord. And when you go, God will cause you to come back safely and you will be guiltless. In other words, sometimes people have this uh, post-traumatic um, kind of syndrome and that they have guilt feelings and, and they have mental problems as a result of being in war. But God promised that if you covenant with him, he will lift that guilt. He'll make it so that you can go and do your job in war and you'll come back and you'll be guiltless. And I'm just saying that this is part of the vengeance of God. He protects his people, whether you're in war, whether you're here uh, in the cities, whether you're at the job or whatever have you. So whatever has been tampering with your destiny, when tampering uh, with your progress, your peace, your career, your business, your family, your children, God is going to command vengeance. He's going to command justice on your behalf. So the Lord not only will execute justice on your behalf, but also recompense. He's going to get your stuff back. I'm talking about he's going to get back what somebody stole from you and make them pay damages for it. Now, this is a good, uh, I mean, it's a precious benefit for this whole idea of vengeance and recompense. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30, he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord and I will recompense. Glory to God. So this is your day of justice. I want you to get this series. Make sure you go through it because I'm going to tell you something. It's going to change your whole attitude about the things that God has called you to do. This is Bill Winston saying, we love you and keep walking by faith. Justice. In today's headlines, a cry for justice, a long wait for justice. Family gets justice. Justice arrives for all. A justice served. Finally, justice. He is saying now the days of your struggling are over. He is saying now anything from now on that's making you uncomfortable, I'm going to remove it. You don't have to depend on the police. You don't have to depend on Paul Paul no more. You can go to the court of heaven. God is a judge. And people are not your problem. They're just puppets being used by the puppet master. And what you and me going to do is we going to take the puppet master before God. When you go after him, you will spoil his house. Now is the set time for justice to prevail on God's people who have been oppressed with forces that have sat on their destiny. To order your copy of Your Day of Justice by bank card at 1-800-711-9327 or online at www.billwinston.org.